Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. I have to get used to something because I bought a new microphone which is directly connected to my camera and I hope it does sound okay. If it doesn't sound okay, then I'm going to kill myself at the end of the video, okay? <laughs> Watch till the end. Watch till the end. That's what Morx would say. So I have to get used to this cable salad right here, okay? I hope I'm not going to trip over something. We are going to play around with the D today. Mm -hmm. The big D, yes, yes. We are going to play around with the D today, the differential operator in one dimension. And I'll tell you what, this thing is actually pretty dope, okay? There's one really awesome theorem that we are going to talk about today, which is going to make it so effing easy to solve differential equations from time to time, okay? So watch till the end. To see the big conclusion made, what is the D operator, okay? If we have, for example, a function f with respect to x, t, whatsoever, we can differentiate this thing with respect to x, with respect to the independent variable right here. Meaning, in normal case, we denote this as d dx f. But we are going to make a little um, change of name, okay? We are going to define our d dx to be nothing but a d, okay? So this is nothing new right here. You have used this before. This thing right here is just another bit of notation, a bit of really nice notation, okay? Differential d, differential starts with a d, okay? Differential operator, I hope this does make sense. And yeah, it's just what you would expect from it, okay? It's just a simple differential, meaning there are certain things that hold. For example, we can differentiate a function twice and then we can differentiate it thrice or we can differentiate it thrice at first and then twice. And this is going to result in d of 2 plus 3 f, which is nothing but d of 5 f. So that's the fifth differential. This is one of the rules that holds, okay? Or for example, if we have d of a times f, okay? Where a is just an arbitrary constant out of the real numbers, for example, independent on x. Well, d is linear, you, you know this already, a times the differential of f. For example, what happens if we have d of f plus g, okay? Like I said, it's a linear operator. This is going to result in df plus dg. Those are all well-known properties of the differential operator in one dimension. But one really cool thing is, if we have, for example, differential equation, we can kind of treat this differential equation as a polynomial in our differential operator D, okay? This is a real formal argument, but it's extremely powerful. And for this, I would like to derive something today, the so-called shift theorem. And the basis for this exponential shift theorem is actually nothing but the simple product rule, okay? Bear with me here. So we know, yeah, and you know all the other d differential rules, but one really important is the product rule, okay? If we have D, of f times g, two functions with respect to x. Well, what is this going to be? Well, this is nothing but g times the differential in f plus f times the differential in g. This is something that you already know, okay? What happens now if we replace, for example, the function g right here with, let's say, some exponential function? It's a really nice function and you probably know why, because it's going to preserve itself after, differ after differentiation. This is something really powerful, okay? So let's say that our g is going to be defined as e to the x, but with another parameter, e to the a times x. I'm doing this on purpose, okay? Then we are going to have the product rule right here being nothing but, okay, we can plug all of this in. We are going to have e to the ax times df plus f d of e to the ax. We know how differentiation on the exponential function works. We are going to track the a to the front. That's why I parameterized it. And then we are going to multiply it by e to the ax. Now, maybe you see something. We have e to the ax as a common factor right here. And from the right, this is important, from the right, we have f as a factor, okay? Meaning we can factor everything out. This is e to the ax. If we have f as a common factor 
on the right hand side. We can put it here. What are we going to be left with? Well, D plus A. This right here is actually the first step to proving the explanatory shift theorem. We have to generalize this a bit more. But why is it important to have F right here on this side? So why can we just bring it to the left side, for example? Well, if you drag the F out of the differential, this really doesn't make too much sense notation-wise, in my opinion. So you shouldn't do that because this differential tells you that you are differentiating something in here, okay? It's an operation on a certain function, so you can just drag it to the left-hand side. So order is important. This is something really important right here. Now, what is the more generalized identity right here? For example, if you would differentiate this thing twice here, okay? Then you would do this and differentiate it once again. Then you would have D of this chunk right here by this rule, okay? We would have D of one plus one is D of D F G, then you would differentiate this once again. I'm going to tell you the theorem right here and we're going to give it a little short using the, math the principle of mathematic induction. So you can do a few iterations, but you are going to see immediately that you are going to be left with this very thing right here, that if we have D to the kth power of E to the A X F, we are going to be left with e to the ax, it's going to be preserved all the time, d plus a to the kth power times f. Isn't that kind of cool? So you see, we are dragging this k right here, this um, k times differentiation just to here, and we are going to end up with something binomial, you see? And this is something we are going to need in a few minutes. So let us prove this right here. Um, for the first iteration, so if this right here is our proposition, okay, of k, then we have already proven the first iteration. So p of 1, that's the induction base, is nothing but d e to the a x of f, okay, this is going to result in this, d plus a to the first power, this already holds. Now we are going to assume that p of n is true, okay? If you don't know anything about the principle of mathematical induction, I made a video on that already, if, a few videos actually. Okay, we are going to assume that P of n is true. Okay, this is something we are going to do right here. And now we want to show that P of n plus one is true under the condition that P of n, and yeah, in this case, P of one is already true, okay? For all the other p of n's, it's already true. For a fixed p of n in this case, this is just a mathematic induction, not strong induction, okay? I'm terribly sorry. So, what is p of n plus 1? Well, this is nothing but the left-hand side of this thing right here with the n plus 1 plugged into here, okay? So, so that's quite cool. We're going to have d of n plus 1 e to the ax f. That's a really ugly looking f, I'm terribly sorry. Now, we can make use of this differentiation rule right here, okay? This is pretty simple to prove using the principle of mathematic induction. Meaning this is nothing but the differential of the nth derivative of e to the ax times f. But we suppose that p of n is true. Meaning this thing right here is actually nothing but this, but with an n up here, okay? This is just how mathematic induction works. Meaning that's the differential of e to the ax d plus a to the nth power f. Now, I would like to just make a little change right here in variable. Let's say this thing right here, this differentiated n times with some other constant function f, is nothing but a new function g. Meaning, if we differentiate e to the ax times g, we are just going to be left with the regular product rule that we have right here. So this is going to be e to the ax, d plus a to the first power, times g. But what is g exactly? g is nothing but this right here. So we are going to have e to the ax, d plus a, d plus a to the nth power times f. And overall this is going to give us d plus a to the n plus one power, which is going to prove our theorem that we have right here. And in the next step we are going to prove the exponential shift theorem and I'm going to see you in a second. So what we've gathered here is already 
pretty powerful. Okay, but we can go further. Now we are going to talk about the exponential shift theorem. This sounds so fancy and it is and it is. I'll tell you this. At first I would like to take a look at a simple nth degree polynomial. Okay, I hope you know what polynomials look like. If we have a polynomial in x, in x, not, not x or the, the German boy came through, okay? This is nothing but a0 plus a1 x to the first power plus dot 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 up until a n x to the nth power. As a little um, math nut, right? That sounded so weird, a math nut. Um, as a little something that you can think about in your free time, okay? <laughs> this thing has n distinct roots, okay? Or n real or complex roots, okay? It, they don't have to be distinct roots. I'm terribly sorry. We can rewrite this in some notation, okay? So meaning our um, i, for example, is between zero and n in this case of our a i x to the i power. This is what it looks like. Now, what is going to happen if we plug in our d operator into here, okay? This, this idea is quite weird, but it's cool, okay? It's a really Gucci thing. If we plug d into here, all of this is going to change and we are going to have a i times d to the i power right here. Now, I would like to take this p n of d to be our new differential operator, okay? We are going to find an analogous formulation for this um, cave iterated product rule using this new differential operator. Now we are going to take a look at pn of d e to the ax times f. Well, at first we can simply write everything out and see what we get. This is going to give us this finite boy, this finite boy of, okay, this is ai d to the i power e to the ax times f. Now, we already know something about this right here, d to the i power e to the ax times f. Hold on, this is just this right here, okay? Meaning we can turn this part right here into finite boy, ai e to the ax d plus a to the i power this time times f. Meaning overall, e to the ax is independent of i, we can bring it to the front, and well, we have f on the right hand side. Now, we have e to the ax times something, what is this going to be? We will see in a second, times f. If you bring this to the outside and this to the right hand side, we are going to have the summation from 0 to n of ai, so the coefficients, times d plus a to the i power. This is just our polynomial of the nth degree in d plus a this time, okay? This is quite ground, groundbreaking right here, pn of d plus a. This is our exponential shift theorem. And it's extremely powerful. It's going to help us find a really nice solution for nth order linear homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients. Okay, I'm going to make a video on that. And this in itself is really powerful. So we are going to use it a few times. It's just something that's really neat. And like I said before, as a little math nut, okay, you can nut at home if you want. Don't forget that we can express polynomials using linear factors. So if we would know the roots of this polynomial p and d, we can also rewrite this polynomial right here as its linear factors, product of linear factors. Same thing holds for here. And this is the absolute monster key to solve our nth order differential equations I just talked about. This has been the shift operator. Um, no, the, the, d, the d operator. It's still warm here in Germany. I'm terribly sorry. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend our channel if you like. If you want to support the channel a bit more by those teachers I created, or support channel on Patreon. And up until the next video, I'm wishing you guys a flammable day. See ya. Ciao. Whatsoever. <laughs>